In this video, I'm going to create some puke and use the tween service to expand it out. So I'll do a demo right here. We get tired. Uh, so I'm going to work on the puke. So I'm going to instantiate some puke in the world on the server side. I'm going to expand it out using the tween service. It's going to be pretty cool. So let's go ahead and get started with that. All right, since I'm going to leverage off my last video, I decided to get the game for the last video, make it shareable. I'll put this link in the description. You click on it, come here, hit these three dots. You won't get this stuff down here, but you will get edit. Click on that and you're going to get the ending of the third video where we do the animation and face plant. And you can look in the playlist to see the one preceding it in case you want to go through the video if you didn't see it. So this little guy right here has my animation in it. If you play the game now, the animation is not going to work because the ID is saved off under my account. Let's go ahead and save the ID off under your account. So hit the plugins, go to animation editor, click on him, and you should see the animation load. If you don't, go ahead and hit these three dots, load. I called it collapse three. So it's in this little guy here. If you look in your workspace, faceplant anim, anim saves, right? There he is, collapse three. All right, so this is our animation. Pay particular attention to this. This was an event that I added. I right clicked and I added an animation event right there and I called it puke, all right? So we're gonna save this off. We're gonna hit these three dots. Well, not save it, but publish to Roblox. All right, and you can call it whatever you want. We're going to use the ID, not the name. So you have to do this under your account if you want the animation to work. We hit submit. Boom, we have an ID right here. We hit those little squares, it says ID copied. We're going to go, I'm going to close that down to our starter GUI, screen GUI, back frame, shift run, and I put the animation here, collapse. You need to change this number with your number in order for it to work, All right? And now we could try it out. Let's close this, go home, hit play, and we're gonna see if the animation works. And I should have made this go down faster for the video, but that's fine. It's gonna be like yours. And here we go. Ah, uh, nice. And I'll do this under one of my alts just to make sure everything goes smoothly. I actually had done it under my alts to make sure it goes smoothly. Cool beans. All right. So we got the animation working and we saw where the event got fired. This is where it is in the code. Get marker reach signal puke. So the animation event was called puke. We are going to add a remote event here to contact the server to instantiate some puke and grow it out right where our face is. So the first thing we need to do is get a remote event to talk to the server. Replicated storage is a good place to put remote events. Hit the plus. I see it right here. If you don't have it, do R E M and you'll see remote event. Cool. And we'll call this vom R E for vomit remote event. Nice. And I think I'll put it up at the top. I like to put my remote events at the top. So I'll say local. First, I need to get replicated storage. I'll call that RS. That's an equal sign. Uh, game get service replicated storage. And then we'll get our VOM RE. My convention is to make variables lowercase. You can do what you want with that. Just remember, if you pick a convention, you got to stick with it. So I need to get the rep replicated storage. Wait for child. And there's VOM RE. Cool, we have a remote event. We're gonna go down here and instead of just a print, we are gonna signal the server. We're gonna say vomre fire server, right? The player will go over as the first argument on the, client, on the server side. We don't have to send it, it goes automatically, but I wanna send the position of the head. So I'm gonna say char, because we have a char character right here, right? And presumably we'll have a head. There's no error checking here. So if he dies just as he's going down, we could get an error. So you might have to do a check. You should play around with it to see if you want to make this code more hardy, but it will add to more complexity. 
So I'm going to get the head's position because I want to put the vomit right at the head's position. Cool. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and get to the server side. Maybe what we should do is copy these while we're here because we need to get the remote event on the server side too. It's going to be the exact same two lines of code. So I'm just going to copy that. Now I'm going to go to server script service, hit the plus, and a lot of things are being called vomit. So I'm going to call this vomit script. I usually don't call things script at the end, but we're going to have a lot of things called vomit. And I'm going to paste those two lines of code. If you didn't do that, you could just type them in, but it's going to be quicker this way. All right. Now I need to get some vomit. I need to make some. So before we go any further, let's go to our world and make some vomit. So we'll get our cylinder. That's going to be a pool. Did that stick? Nope, it's good. Let's rotate it. Nice. And we're not going to rename it. Not yet. Not until it's done. Um, I'm going to change the size first. So X is the height because we rotated it, right? So we're going to change it to maybe 0.1. 5 and 5. Don't worry too much about this because we're going to expand it out, but get kind of an idea of what you want. So that's a pool. It's pretty plain. Let's make it like something gross, like yellow. And then the material corroded metal looks good for vomit. It works good for like uh, lava too, if you have like a red corroded, corroded metal. That's pretty good. Let's make sure that the collisions are off. I'll do a control D to duplicate in place. I just created another part. I'm going to drag it out. Maybe make like a little double pool here. Maybe make this one smaller. So instead of 0.15 and 5, I'll make that, make that 0.13 and 3. Nice. And I think I'm going to make this all one part. So I'm going to go to model and I'm going to union these together. I'm going to select both. So I'm going to hit the shift button, click the big pool. And now you'll notice both of those parts are selected. Hit union. Voila. You have one part and it's called union. We could rename it to vomit. Cool. And now we want the vomit to be really tiny when we first instantiate it, when we first create it in the world and then expand out. We're going to do it right under his head and we don't want to see it when we first make it. So I'm going to scale it down so that it's small. Cool. All right. And now I'm going to go home toolbox audio. I'll call this vomit, but I want to make, oh, I want to only have short ones to pick from. So I'm going to hit these little lines here. Sound length from zero minutes to zero minutes and say five seconds. Apply. We got a lot of stuff in here, a lot of crazy stuff that's not called vomit. The, uh, the search mechanism for Roblox leaves a lot to be desired. I just hit it again and it worked. All right, cool. This is the one I used in the demo, the Sammy likes objects. I wish we could thumbs up it. The thumbs up looks gone. I would have given him a thumbs up. It's a good one. We could play it if you want. Here, play it. Yeah, that sounds like good vomit. All right, so we got the sound. Maybe we'll call this vomit sound, SND, just so we don't get things confused because the parts vomit. So we'll put it on the part. The reason I'm putting it on the part is when we, when we create it in the world, if the vomit is actually, or if the sound is actually on a part in the world, as you get farther away, you're going to have the drop off of the sound. It's going to be more realistic. If you just put the sound in the workspace, everybody's going to hear it equally. So we're going to give this a little more realistic effect. So this is tiny and that's fine. We're going to move this down to server script. No, uh, server storage. I'm sorry. Server storage. It's removed from the world. It's in server storage. We're going to create that object right where the guy's face hits the ground. All right. So let's go back to our vomit script and we need to get server storage. Whoops. I just renamed my thing by accident. Control Z. There we go. Local SS for server storage game, get service 
server storage. Cool. And now let's get our vomit. Uh, let's call it vomit template. So it's the template from which all vomit will be created. So server storage, wait for child vomit. That's our template. What else are we going to need? We're going to grow it out. So we're going to need something called the tween service. It's animation for parts and UI objects. You could do size stuff, color stuff with it. It's really cool. And we're going to expand our vomit with it. So we're going to say TS for tween service, game, get service, tween service. And then another thing I'm going to need is the debris service because we want to give our vomit a time to live, like 20 seconds, and then it's going to disappear from the world, right? Like somebody cleaned it or something. So the debris service does that. We'll say game get service debris. All right, now we look good to go. Let's make a function, a local function on puke. And we're going to get the player because it's coming from uh, the client, right? We're using the remote event from the client. The player will always be the first argument on the server side. Then we're going to get the position of the head, All right? And then let's get our vomit, we'll say vomit, from the vomit template by cloning it. So if you've done Java and you know clone from Java, Java does not do a deep clone. But Lua, it does. So you're going to get everything that we set on the vomit. It's going to be an exact clone, a deep clone, that's called. All right, and then we'll do vomit.parent. We'll make that the workspace <clears throat> so we could see it. And then vomit position. All right, this is going to be a little bit trickier than you think. We're going to get the position of the head. Whoops. But. It's going to be right smack in the center of the dude's head. We got to move it down to his face. So we're going to translate the vector a little bit by this vector three new. For now, let's put a zero, 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 because we don't know. We're going to have to change the height of the vomit. All right, let's go and take a look at our player or our dummy. A dummy is a good one to see. It's going to be in the center of his head. We got to move it towards his face, but he's going to be down. So we're going to be moving it in the negative y direction. Um, let's go to our face plant anim dummy, get his head, right? And then we're going to add an attachment just to do some checking. Why I like attachment, if you hit this move, it puts it right in the center of his head and the position is in relation to his head. So it's zero, zero, zero here. If I move the attachment, to right where I want the vomit, and you can move it however you want, up and down. I'm just gonna put it right, right between the eyes, right about here, that's fine. We are looking at about a point, a negative point five on the Z. We're pulling it Z because he's facing in the negative Z direction. So what's negative point five? That's about where I want my vomit to spawn. All right, so we can delete this. We know that we know that his head is about one stud, right, on this direction. Let's just go ahead and delete. Go back to our vomit script. And because it's Y, it's going to be up and down. Remember, it was cylinder, so we did the height here for the size of the cylinder. But now we're doing position, and we made it a union. So we're going to do height on the Y. So we'll do a negative... 0.5 and try that out. We're just going to move it down a little bit. All right. And just to be sure that we don't have any funny results with his face, let's go to our vomit. We can't see it in the world, but what we can do is we can turn can collide off and then anchored on. Right. And that way we don't have to worry about it interfering with stuff like going under the ground. Um, it's going to be it will fall if you don't anchor it though. So you got to remember that. Cool. What else do we need? Oh, we need our sound, right? That would be cool to have the sound. All right, so we have a vomit and then on the vomit was vomit sound. All right, and now we need to tween. So we're going to change our size of our vomit and we need a target size. I'll call that the pool size. That's the totally inflated vomit pool. 
So we'll say vector 3 new. I might make it a little thicker, like 0.2 on the on the on the x. I believe that's what we want to do is on the x. We'll find out when we go to do it. Once you start changing the orientation of these parts, sometimes it can get confusing. But we'll give that a test, see if it works. I think that's the one we, have, we want. All right, so that's the pool size. We're going to need tween info. So tween info has a lot of cool stuff you can do to your animation effect. Uh, the most basic is the time. That's what we're going to fill in today. We have the time, easing style, easing direction. I'll do a few of those. But uh, right now, we're just going to pass in the time that the expansion is going to happen over. And I'm going to make that the sounds time length. I thought that would be a good one to do it over. It's about four seconds. Now we'll say local tween TS for tween service create. We're creating a tween. We're going to do it on the vomit. We got to pass in the tween info. That's the time and other things that you might want to configure. And now we're going to do that little bracket thingy here. All right. It's going to be a table because you can actually change a lot of different aspects of the of the of the object we're only going to change size and we're going to make it equal to the pool size All right so it's starting out tiny remember we shrunk it down and then it's going to expand out to the pool size which is six by six all right so now that we created the tween we can play the tween we can play the sound too let's play the sound and play the tween at the same time right one after the other, but there's really no delay. You're not going to know which happened first. Cool. And then we're not going to do a bother or waiting on the script here because the guy's going to be laying for a while. But we are going to add the vomit to the debris service with this add item. And we'll say vomit. And this is the time to live. I'll give it a 20 second time to live. How is this fired? Well, we're going to go down here. And we are going to capture our vom re on server event, connect it to on puke. Make sure there's no extra parentheses here, right? Um, our remote event already has sent the position, and then the player will get sent in. Everything is good to go. Let's give it a shot. Let's see what we got. Let's hit play. We're going to run, 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 run. There we go. Oh man, that's pretty nice. Laying face down. Look at that, the puke is slightly above the ground. So you could change that. You could make it go down a little, but it's so close, I'm not gonna mess with it. I'm gonna leave it like that. So there you go. You got as a four video series there for your sprint run with stamina face plate, face plant puke. All right, I will see you in the next video. We're going to start on data stores.